Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. For this video, we're going to work on verifying trigonometric identities. So the idea behind this is that you have some sort of trigonometric expression and it's actually equal to some other trigonometric expression. Now, the, the difficulty is really figuring out, do these two things equal the same thing? Are they really equal? And it is kind of a tricky process, but I think I have some good tips that will keep you on track and hopefully make this a little bit easier. Uh, one of the first tips is you really have to know all of your identities. Uh, there's lots of little connections that might take you from side A to side B, and knowing those identities will make it a little bit easier to recognize maybe what you can swap out. Another good tip is always start with the more complicated side. Usually we uh, have a little bit of a simpler time canceling things out or making things uh, simpler. So the more complicated side is usually easier to do that with. You can also uh, write things using only sine and cosine. That usually helps us figure out any relationships that we might see, because then we don't have to use quite as many identities, usually only using the ones using sine and cosine. It can also reveal things that maybe need to be canceled out or simplified, uh, since now we're only dealing with two trigonometric functions instead of all six of them. Uh, we might also factor or multiply by a 1 to go ahead and change how a fraction looks. This one's a little bit difficult to describe when I say multiply by 1. Uh, what I mean by that is we might multiply by expressions like cosine plus 1 all divided by cosine plus 1. And that's technically equal to 1, but it's usually an expression like that that can help me change how something looks. And of course, my, my last tip for this is you want to practice verifying these as much as possible. Uh, there's a lot of things that could happen as you're moving from side A to side B, and the more you practice, the more you do these, the easier it will get and the more uh, relationships you'll see to connect both sides. All right? So we're going to do uh, a few more examples than usual so you can see what this process looks like. The first of these that we're going to work on is secant x minus cosine of x is equal to sine of x multiplied by tangent of x. So we're just supposed to verify if this identity is true. And um, in terms of which side I should start with, they both look about the same, so I'm just going to start over here on the left. Now it's not clear how all of a sudden subtraction turns into multiplication. So just to get things started, I'm going to start writing things into sine and cosine. So I know that uh, secant over here is the same as one divided by cosine. And of course I just have cosine. Now again, that doesn't look anything like the right, but I'm manipulating this, hopefully trying to get it to look like the right uh, somewhere along the, the line. All right, now that I have uh, essentially a fraction, I'm thinking, well, maybe there's a way I can combine it with the other fraction if I could get a common denominator. Let's go ahead and view this as over one, and then get that common denominator by multiplying the second one on the top and bottom by cosine of x. So this is one of those situations where I'm essentially multiplying by one, but I'm doing it to change how things look. All right, let's see what that gives us. So we'll have a one minus, these cosines will multiply, so cosine squared of x, all divided by, I'll have my common denominator, so all over cosine of x. All right, I'm feeling a little bit better about this. Uh, on the top, I recognize that we actually have a Pythagorean identity. 1 minus cosine squared is equal to sine squared. And now I can feel like we're getting really close. I'm not dealing with subtraction anymore, uh, but I'm still looking for that sine and tangent. So I think, I think one last step we can do is go ahead and split this up. I'll go ahead and split it up into sine, that's from the top, multiplied by sine over cosine. And sure enough, there's our sine of x multiplied by tangent of x. So notice how along the way, it's not really clear what step I should do next, but I'm just trying to fuse different things to manipulate it and get it a little bit closer to the right side. And I'm always checking the right side, you know, trying to get clues, uh, maybe how I should change it or which direction I'm going. All right, let's try another one of these. Now for this next one, let's do tangent squared of x multiplied by one plus cotangent squared of x uh, that is all equal to 1 divided by 1 minus sine squared of x. Lots of stuff going on in this one. Uh, so let's see, I'm going to start over here on the left again. I think I'll just first start off by distributing my tangent, of, tangent squared. So tangent squared x, I'll be multiplied by 1. Then I'll have plus uh, tangent squared multiplied by cotangent squared. 
Okay, so um, not really sure how I'm going to get a fraction out of this just yet, but I have a good feeling about the tangent squared and the cotangent squared because they'll actually cancel each other out and leave me with a one. To see that, or if you didn't see that, imagine changing these into sine and cosine. So tangent is sine squared over cosine squared, and cotangent is cosine squared over sine squared. So there's what I was talking about in that uh, stuff cancels out, you know? I can cancel out my sines, I can cancel out the cosines, and then I'll just be left with one. So tangent squared of x plus one. Uh, now that's pretty good, um, but still not looking like the right side. Fortunately, this is another one of our Pythagorean identities. All of this is actually equal to secant squared. Okay, not bad. And now it looks like I'm a bit stuck. I'm not really sure how I'm going to turn this into a fraction. Well, if you do get stuck with a situation like this, you could always uh, take a peek at this other side and maybe start manipulating that and work backwards and hopefully get to this secant squared. So looking at the, my expression over here, I realized that, you know what, on the bottom, we have another Pythagorean identity. On the bottom here, it's actually equal to cosine squared. And then actually I have my connection right there. Uh, secant is the same as one divided by cosine. So secant squared is equal to one over cosine squared and then of course that equals one minus sine squared of x. All right, so here I have my list of steps of really how I build into that right side. And if you think about also working in the other direction, if I started with the right side, it also builds into the left, really verifying that these things are equal. All right, let's move on to another one. For this one I have one minus secant of theta all divided by one plus secant of theta. Uh, that's equal to cosine of theta minus one, all divided by cosine of theta plus one. Not sure if these are equal, but we'll find out really quickly. Um, I have a really good feeling about this one because secant is equal to one divided by cosine. And since I'm looking for cosines, I'm just going to immediately change them into cosines. So one divided by cosine of theta, all divided by one plus uh, one over cosine of theta. Now my cosines aren't really on the right spot. I'd, I'd really like them over here. Uh, I think this is another great instance where, where we're gonna go ahead and multiply the top and bottom uh, by cosine so that we can put it in the right spot, essentially manipulate it, make it look a little bit better. Uh, I do have to be a little bit careful when I multiply on the top and bottom by this cosine. It has to distribute to both parts in here. So let's carefully go through this to make sure we haven't lost anything. So on the top, we're just going to distribute our cosine to both parts. Let's see, that'll give us a cosine of theta. And then cosine will multiply over here. It'll be cosine of theta divided by cosine of theta, so that's just a one. And now we wanna repeat this process with the bottom. So this bottom cosine is distributing to both of those parts. So cosine of theta plus one. And sure enough, that's exactly what we wanted for the right side. So we're in good shape. Uh, we've verified this identity. And this one actually didn't involve a whole lot other than just writing it in terms of uh, cosine and manipulating it, multiplying it on the top and bottom by cosine. All right, one last one. Let's pick one that looks fairly ugly. Let's try this guy out. This is cosine squared uh, multiplied by secant squared plus cosine squared multiplied by cosecant squared. Uh, we're going to verify that that's really equal to cosecant squared. All right, so now this one, the left side is definitely the more complicated one. Lots of stuff going on there. Uh, let's go ahead and write this one in terms of sine and cosine. And my motivation for that is I'm looking at secant. I know it's one over cosine, so I'm hoping that both of those actually cancel out or at least uh, go away. So let's see, cosine squared of x multiplied by one over cosine squared of x. Okay, so there's that. Uh, moving on, cosine squared of x, this is, uh, well, it's not cosine, it's 1 over sine squared of x. All right, so that's a little bit better. At least I can cancel out these cosines. We don't have to worry about those. Um, and cosine squared over sine squared, that's actually equal to my cotangent. So 1 plus cotangent squared of x. All right, not bad. 
Uh, but hey, wait a minute. Looks like we have a Pythagorean identity here. I can go ahead and swap this out for cosecant squared x, which is exactly what the right side is. Not bad. So as you're doing more of these, you'll really notice how knowing those identities, uh, very, being very familiar with them, is going to be very helpful for really recognizing situations like that. Uh, really brush up on your Pythagorean identities. They seem to be pretty common for a lot of different examples. Uh, but also make sure that you can write any function in terms of just sine and cosine, and that will also help you see those different connections. And of course, the more practice you can get with these, uh, the better. Uh, maybe even grab some additional problems out of your, your, your workbooks and, and see what other problems, more identities you can do, so that if you uh, get to a test, you'll, you'll be more than prepared because you've seen a lot of different ways that you can essentially verify these many identities. All right, if you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.